Kirka are powerful media in promoting understanding and strengthening friendships across national boundaries. Uh, and uh, so today we have gathered here to listen to these young people. And today's theme is uh, the head or the heart. And I would like to ask our young speakers uh, to remember that uh, in their speeches today they have to inform, entertain, persuade and inspire the audience in any style they like. Uh, because as Voltaire said, all styles are good except the tiresome one. Mm -hmm. uh, so good luck to you. And I would like to <coughs> introduce Helen, who will help us today, and she is the winner of one of our national competitions. And finally, I would like to express um, our enormous gratitude for our headquarters in London to ESU Georgia members, and uh, uh, our special thanks go to Ms. Judith Goff, uh, Her Majesty's Ambassador to Georgia, to Bill McAllister, a great friend of Georgia, and to Sean Phillips, the greatest uh, English actress. And I'd like to ask Sean maybe to say a few words to us and maybe read something from Shakespeare. Oh, oh. <laughs> 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 Who's got Shakespeare? Yeah, I can have a Shakespeare. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm very honored to be uh, here as a member of this very, very distinguished panel. Um, I'm just here for a week making a movie which is partly in Georgian, partly in English, partly in Russian, I think, and partly in something else, probably. Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I really don't want to leave tomorrow. I've had a wonderful, wonderful time here, culminating in this lovely event in this absolutely beautiful house. I, if I could just briefly say something personal, um, I come from, a, a, I, although I work in English in, in London and in New York, mostly in the theatre, and spend my life speaking English, I'm not English. I was raised speaking Welsh, which is a language no one else speaks. And it's, it's far, I come from a very small country called Wales, which nobody much talks about. So we have a few things in common. Georgia is a small country and no one else speaks Georgian as far as I can make out. But uh, public life in England, and especially in Parliament, um, as Bill was pointing out the other day, has really been enlivened in the last hundred years, I suppose, by the oratory and the mastery of English of, I'm very proud to say, Welsh politicians, people who were brought up speaking Welsh. So you, public speaking, I spend my life speaking in public, which is very, very different from doing public speaking, which is what you're going to do. And I rather suspect that public speaking is probably more difficult than doing what I do. But I would just like to say that what you are doing, and you're doing it in another language, is difficult. Um, we can't pretend it isn't difficult, it's a difficult thing. And, and you, are, you come from a small country and you speak a language nobody else speaks. So what you're doing is difficult, but believe me, I can assure you, it is absolutely possible for it to be gloriously successful, which I'm sure you would all be, and I really look forward to this afternoon. <laughs> I'm not going to join Shakespeare. <laughs> Another girl I am very proud of and who also will help us to lead this competition today, take a look at It is Sophie Gorgodze who won uh, international competition in London in 2002 among those 53 countries and she was uh, the one so I am really proud of her. And she has uh, just given a birth to a little boy and uh, that's why she, she was late. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hello everyone, thank you so much for being here and I hope we're going to have an interesting experience. Uh, we're just going to start
start off now, and the first speaker is Elena Gogicevic-Shvili with her speech, A Clear Board to Act On. You have five minutes, I will ring a bell when there's one minute left, and then ring a little more when there's no time, so make sure you like the timing. Thank you. Hello everyone, so as Ellen said, my speech is about writing on a board on a clean board. So, the sun has just risen up, and the beautiful light just filled everything. What a beautiful morning outside. The students get to school, turn, um, get to the classroom, turn the lights on, take their seats, and look at the white clean board. Then the teacher enters the room. Good morning, children. Good morning. And the lesson starts. The teacher writes uh, problems on this white board and helps the students solve the problems and helps the students to find the right way to the correct answer. Every little person is born with this white, clean board, like a uh, clean heart, like this board. So, uh, this, uh, every person has this white, clean, oh, oh yeah. sorry, well, what I'm, I'm trying to say is this, oh my god, a little child has clean heart, and everybody, when they're little, they have a clean heart, but later on, they get impacted uh, by other people, and uh, their points of views change. They change, but they still need to listen to their hearts. They still need to... Uh, uh, follow their thoughts. Little Anna Frank, she said, she still, she believes that people are good at heart. Well, they are, probably. So, uh, let's say if we, for instance, if we take this little tree, take care of it, water it, it will grow healthy and later on give us healthy fruits. Same can be for a little child. If a child is brought up in a peaceful environment and peaceful, healthy family who can have life. So we need to make sure to listen to our hearts and we need to make sure that we are holding those clean boards and write the problems on the board, let the little ones learn and uh, help them find out the right ways to the correct answer. We need to make sure to write kindness love, appreciation, patience on the board, and uh, teach the little ones to learn from us. Of course, life is not an easy thing, and as I said and mentioned above, it impact, in, impacts all of us. But I believe that a person can keep this clean heart for all his life, Steve, and we find nothing wrong there. What is there to fear? What is there to worry about? Maybe the heart is the way, and the sky is not the way. So first uh, subject for the lesson, maybe uh, can be following your heart, it will show you the right way. So I believe that, of course, we need to use our heads while making hard decisions, but we always need to listen to our hearts. Because after a couple of years, if we look into our hearts and we find something wrong there, that decision may not be right. So just probably follow your dreams on the way by heart. Thank you. Uh, one of the parts of evaluation comes from answering the questions. So if the judges have any questions. But I think, uh, yeah, it would be better to listen to our hearts more too. And probably human beings, we are all human beings, and we just forget about, about our hearts sometimes. But yeah, maybe for the future, we just need to listen to our hearts more. That's what I wanted to say. Okay, um, another question? Uh, sorry, I have one question concerning this one. When she asked her question, she said, unfortunately, they followed her head. So do you think it's a bad thing to follow your head? Uh, for what I think, just follow, of course it's not a bad thing, but what I mean is just following your head, uh, I don't think that will bring you to the 
the right uh, answer and the right solution. Because if you don't listen to your heart, yes, you may make a decision, but after some time, you may not feel very comfortable uh, of your decision because of not listening to your heart. Both, but not forget about the heart. <laughs> okay, I've um, got time for one question, yes, please. Why not to love? I know that it's completely another dimension. Do you think heart is uh, enough? To um, uh, live in love? Just following your heart, is it enough to live in love? But it depends. Probably yes, but it's not like it's not like uh, you should not listen to your head while, as I said, making decisions, but probably yes, that's how I think. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> your guests, your participants. I presume all of you have seen this symbol before. It's often used to represent the concept of opposites existing in harmony. It's quite hard to imagine that opposites can exist in harmony. So is to see that all the lines are straight on this picture, which they, most definitely they are. But actually, we'll get back to this talk later. Do you have a soul? I believe many of you have asked that question to yourselves. But the question I have would be, what is soul? Please, close your eyes for a moment. And picture it. Picture your soul. What did you see? Any visual image? Maybe you heard the sound. Maybe you sensed something. All of you <coughs> see and understand it in your own unique way. That in itself is a simple example of manifestation of your soul. But where do those feelings and emotions come from? What is this soul built of? For sure, answer for that would be head and heart. Now first, we need to define those two concepts. Head, well, it's analysis, calculation, pragmatism, call, well thought out decisions, intelligence, mind. It is usually defined as the thing that does not let any emotions interfere and has control all over us. It's a pillar of our very entity, a pillar bridge known as soul stands on. Heart, on the other hand, is a thunder, hysterical thunder that is buried deep down in us. Unstoppable lust for life, incredible blaze that makes us feel alive, that makes us feel in the first place. One might say heart is a hidden power <coughs> within us. Power and, of course, a time ticking bomb which can detonate any second. Now, let me ask you one question. Right now, you are looking at me, listening to my speech, and so far, analyzing it. So, which half, or rather, which part of your soul are you using? Head or heart? Without further ado, I will answer this question for you. The shocking truth is, you are using both. And for those of you who thought it was predictable or maybe obvious, I'd say those things don't necessarily mean bad. I mean, for example, nobody can change the obvious fact that sun rises in the east and sets in the west. Like, you can say, Sun will set in the West today, and you are as accurate as Vanga himself, maybe a little more. But does that make sunset any less beautiful? That's why it can't be head or heart, but rather end. The only thing that can be different is a place where idea is born. Uh, for me to, uh, and I personally believe that uh, the idea should be born in mind and mind only. And for me to explain that. Uh, let's walk aside for a moment and talk about love. Uh, nowadays, if you say love and mind in the same sentence, you're considered a heartless, cold person who does not know how to love. And uh, as for me, I believe that many of relationships today fail because they are born in heart. 
You see, when something is born there in that mysterious, mesmerizing place, well, it's exciting, all right, but uh, there always is a point when the idea, yeah, when uh, I, uh, when the idea reaches uh, your mind, and uh, then you start figuring the person in front of you out, and the emotions you had start fading away. And if they were born in uh, your mind, you would first come to understand the person, uh, your partner. Uh, you would uh, come to understand them and fall in love with them, not the sand castles you build with wrong assumptions. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make this point very clear. I do not believe that there is a mind that does not let any emotions interfere, or uh, a heart which just follows instincts and emotions. Look at my t-shirt, my friends. Uh, let's, for example, say black part is mine. Uh, what do you see? Is it all black? Or do you see this little white circle on it? Do you not see that there is still heart in it, in this analytical mind? But... Thank you very much. Uh, if the judges have any questions, if not, if there are any questions in the audience, yes, please. Uh, you said uh, emotions are uh, born in heart, uh, but they should be born in mind. Is that right? No, I believe I said ideas are born in mind or in your heart. Then head analyzes it and uh, heart creates emotions. That. You cannot be a black part with a little white circle or a white part with a little black circle and still allow yourself to call yourself a human. But I said the truth lie deeper. Sorry, I lied. That's this, uh, the truth is, it's the simplest conclusion one might come to. You're neither part. Your soul is a Taijitu as a whole. <laughs> Great, bud. Hi, my name is Mary, and this is my toy panda, as you see. It belonged to my older brother when he was a child, and my brother's name is David, so I call it Panda Dave. Dave and I would like to tell you one story from my life. When I was about 10, my brother left Georgia and he went to live to America. I was seeing him off at the airport, and at the last moment my brother hugged me and said, My little girl, always follow your heart, but take your brain with you, and you will be happy. Well, I promised him I would do exactly as he said, even without seriously thinking about his words. I just wanted him not to worry about, his, about me while he was in America. So. Years passed, I grew up and changed, and I forgot about his words. It was my 16th birthday when he phoned me. Um, he wanted to congratulate me, and but suddenly something happened and he forgot about it. Maybe that's because he heard his sister's voice mixed with the tears. The only thing he asked was, did anyone hurt you? Did my advice let you down? It was a little hard for me to understand what kind of advice he was talking about, but finally I returned my mind to that day at the airport, and my brother's words appeared in my head. How stupid I was. Whispering these words, I hung up the phone. Well, I sat on the floor in tears. Dave, lying nearby, seemed to be the only source of consolation, so I hugged it as hard as I could. I was sitting on the floor and thinking how stupid I was when I was trying to change head or heart while making some decision. I always said, oh my god, how stupid I was, why couldn't I listen to my brain, it was completely right, or stupid me, why didn't I listen to my heart, now the opportunity is lost. I think the situation isn't unfamiliar to almost everyone, because every day we have to face up to heads and hearts arguments <coughs> on different topics. These two crazy guys, they're always arguing inside of us while we are trying to make some decision or just thinking about something. Unfortunately, we are not predictors and we don't know in advance which of them is right. But for some reason, people tend to believe their heart. Maybe um, that's because the heart shouts about its opinion even without a permission, while brain needs a silence and time to think and analyze and only then says what it thinks. I was still thinking on this topic when I heard my phone ringing. I looked at the screen. It was my brother, of course. Still 
stopping a little, I answered. I said, he lied to me. I believed him. I thought I meant something to him, but he just wanted to have fun. I was his dog. My brain told me about this, but the heart's voice was too strong. It blinded me, and it gave me foolish hope. He was quiet. Then he said, my little girl, it's not your fault, but why were you so careless? You could be with that boy, but be more careful. You could listen to your heart, but ask your brain for an advice. I was standing there and thinking about his words. Of course he was right, as always, but I had no strength to say something. So I hung up the phone again, leaving my surprised brother on the other side of the wire. I was standing there and thinking, and some strange thoughts were appearing in my mind. They made me come across the idea that all the mistakes I made while choosing between head and heart had changed me. After making a mistake, making a wrong choice, I realized something. I understood something. I became wiser. I just grew up. Now I knew what I had to say. I phoned my brother and I said, Nissan, I, I'm very grateful to you for your wise advice, but I have found my own way. He was silent. He knew if I called him Nissan, which in Japanese means brother, I was really serious. So I continued. This is the way, my way. I don't want to find compromises between head and heart, because to me it seems simply impossible. They're too crazy to find some compromise. I just want to make mistakes, to learn of them, to stumble and get up. And every time getting up, I will be stronger and better than I was. He kept silent. After a short pause, he said, My little girl, I'm so proud of you. Follow your way, follow yourself. Find anything you are looking for and be happy. Your brother followed his own advice? <laughs> well, uh, yes, he still follows it, but um, I think that after that conversation, he has um, a little changed his lifestyle, and now he more believes his intuition. I <laughs> hope so. Yes. What does the panda think? Well, <laughs> he just wants me to be happy. <laughs> well, thank you so much. <laughs> Your case, it's like, yeah, well, it's crazy. Crazy. <laughs> well, my personal for me, yes. So, in my case, uh, heart is crazier and very often makes me do really foolish things. So, I prefer to ask my brain for advice sometimes. <laughs> okay, thank you. I decided to be sincere, to follow my heart. I'm not strong enough to say the things to the person. I need the most to understand me, but at least I've got enough strength not to hide my feelings anymore. Dear mother, before my departure, sooner or later, you will receive this letter. I want to say a proper goodbye. I have lived in your cage for 17 years. I can't overlook the fact that it was a really good cage. You provided me with food, clothes, education, love, and for that I thank you. But your cage was really small. I always looked at life through the bars, never being able to participate in it. Mother, your love was the greatest, but it never gave me strength. Instead, quite the opposite. It made me lose my self-confidence, self-respect. I wasn't the daughter you always anticipated for, but I also didn't belong to myself. I was your possession. You always told me you knew me very well, like no one else did. Then, if you know me, you understand that I'm grateful for your sacrifice, but I wish you had never given it to me. Because every time you opened the cage, I was reminded of it. I was reminded that my father and my mother sacrificed their lives so that my sister and I would have a good one. Every time you opened the cage, I was never able to leave. So I decided to put my wishes aside. I gave up my writing. I would only go at school. I would only watch movies at night. And I would just dream about going out with friends on weekends. Because you thought they were a waste of time. Because you thought I should only study. And I couldn't argue. My heart said you were right.
and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of being your possession. I'm tired of wishing to be a person who's um, and I'm only her shadow. I'm between nowhere and everywhere. If I die now, my death won't really affect the world. There will be no sign of me. So, you are a really great mother. And if it hadn't been me, your plan would have definitely been successful. But, what's the point in pretending? I can't apologize for being myself. I'm tired of it. So please, open the cage one more time. I think I can fly away. I still don't know if I can do it, but my heart tells me, unless I try, I'll never know. My heart desires will become real. It won't be in pain anymore. This one does not think we can sing. We were given a heart and a hat, so that the hat could translate our heart's desires. I'm sorry, Mother, but I don't want to have any regrets. I'm too short for that. Yes. Before we receiving this letter, you know I won't say a word, right? But you know, being silent doesn't always mean I agree with you. If you listen carefully, if you really listen, you'll hear me. At first whispering, but after you're gaining some courage, after my sister sends me a charm, I'll tell you loud enough to be heard. I'll make sure your heart will, your heart will understand me. I'll make sure that it will mute your head and its comments. I just care for your heart. I just wanted to listen. Because love, you're soon to be happy daughter. <laughs> Both of them committed suicide. 
<laughs> so, I think the point I want to make is that intelligence and intellect can help us save our bodies from suffering. And to be true, we all suffer, and happiness, everything that can bring you happiness, can bring you suffering. It's like a whole pack, it's joined. You cannot separate that. Happiness, emotions, and suffering. But, to be honest with you, I have changed my mind a little bit and moved from being rational to some kind of average person. And why did that happen? When